Good morning everyone, Kevin here from Focus Astronomy and I'm actually getting ready to get out of here. We're heading up to Happy Jack, Arizona. If you're not really sure where Happy Jack is, it's actually about two, two and a half hours northeast of Phoenix. And the whole reason we're going up there today is to check out the Discovery Channel Telescope. And if you're not really familiar with the Discovery Channel Telescope or the DCT as we'll refer to it, it's easier. Um, it is part of Lowell Observatory, yes, the same Lowell Observatory up in Flagstaff that has the 24-inch Clark refractor and the famous Pluto scope. But uh, Lowell also does a lot of research. We're going to go up there today, get a private tour of the telescope, but we're going to take you along with us, and we'll meet you up there. So, talk to you soon. Okay, so a little bit of history about the DCT while we're heading over to meet our friends who are also going up. So the DCT is the largest telescope in Lowell Observatory's lineup. Now Lowell has several telescopes up at their Flagstaff facility, but the DCT sits up on its own out in Happy Jack. And it's, like I said, the largest telescope in their lineup at 4.3 meters in diameter, which means the primary mirror of this thing is about 170 inches wide, which is big. Uh, the DCT is also a Ritchie Crichton telescope, which is actually a variant of the reflecting style telescope. So it uses hyperbolic mirrors in its system. So light comes down, hits the main mirror, and the main mirror is actually a concave mirror, so it's kind of shaped like a bowl. That allows the telescope to collect light and then relay or focus that light up to the secondary mirror, which is sitting up high above the main mirror. Now as the primary focuses the light and the light goes up to the secondary mirror, the secondary mirror is also a hyperbolic figure, but it's convex, so it has an opposite curve, which allows the light to then be focused down through a hole in the primary mirror into the optics or into whatever camera or scientific equipment that they have on a telescope. Okay, so we're here at the Discovery Channel Telescope. It's a little windy, so we are actually going to go inside and check it out. So once you walk into the main door of the observatory, you can find different plaques showing the partners. Uh, this one, for example, shows all the different universities that are actually part of this project. And this is how telescopes normally work of this size. Now continuing on, you go into the control room, which isn't really as big as people think it is, just a couple computers. Now just past the control room and through a couple other rooms, uh, you have the pier room and the pier room is literally a building within the building and this is the room that bears the load of the entire telescope uh, the pier and the telescope are actually completely separate from the observatory dome uh, this is to help prevent vibration or anything else like that around the telescope and makes it uh, much more solid for the instrument and it also gives you the ability to run the cables up to the telescope and you can see the special metal gray ring that actually prevents any cord wrap or anything getting tangled for the instruments above and to ensure that everything is organized correctly. So now we're going to step back outside on the back of the observatory. Okay, so now we're in the back of the observatory at the moment. Um, we have to step outside because there's an adjacent building where they actually coat the primary mirror. So we're gonna go in there and check out the coating chamber right now. So for most large observatories, it doesn't make sense to take the mirror down the mountain to recoat it. Um, for example, the DCT's primary is a $6 million piece of glass, so it's too dangerous. So they put the coating facility on the mountain. So every four years, they pull the telescope mirror out, they put it in this building, they strip the old aluminum coating, and they need to make sure that the mirror surface is nice and clean. And then they put it in this vacuum chamber, which is this large white uh, dome looking thing. And they suck all the air out of there. Um, it takes a couple days to actually remove that much air. And that way, they're ready to coat. And when they're coating, they put pure aluminum on these tungsten filaments. And this is one of those tungsten filaments right here. There's several of these in the chamber. They heat these up via electricity. It vaporizes the aluminum, and since it's a vacuum, it settles and bounces all over the chamber, but a lot of it will actually settle beautifully on the surface of the mirror, and this is only 100 microns thick, so it's very thin coating. And then once it's done, they check the reflectivity, and they pop it back in the telescope. Okay, 
Guys, so we're here at the Discovery Channel telescope inside the dome, and the telescope is right behind me. As you can see, it's huge. Um, it's a 170 inch primary mirror. Uh, these are the actuators right here that can actually shift the mirror slightly. That allows them to get nice sharp star images. Um, all the rattling you hear behind me is the wind opening, hitting the shutters. Um, down here is the instrument cube that we talked about earlier. Um, they have all the cameras and stuff back here, and this is the rotator. Um, the mirror on this is four inches thick, which is relatively thin for such a big mirror. And it's a zero expansion type of glass, so it allows it to keep its figure pretty easily. Um, it is a Ritchie Crichton telescope, so you can see the uh, primary is actually down here. Secondary is up here, focuses the light down to the instruments down here, and then the whole system rotates on the base right here on a separate pier. So the telescope itself is actually separate from the building. So you can see right here, that's the telescope. Underneath is the pier. And then this is the actual observatory building down over here. And they're separate from each other so you can dampen the vibrations when it's windy. Okay, so as we talked about earlier, the unique thing about this telescope is the fact that it can switch instruments very, very quickly with just the touch of a button rather than having to unbolt it from the back. Uh, this is the instrument cube, as they call it here, and under here is all the different spectrographs or cameras or whatever project they have bolted on here. Um, the unique thing about it is they can put five on here rather than one. So back under here is all those uh, different instruments and they can pull them out and move them around as they need to but they're all under here I don't they've got all of five filled but yeah so this is the instrument cube that we were talking about uh, earlier and that's where all the light comes to a focus and then a mirror drops into the system and allows them to switch between each instrument so that's the instrument cube um, yes this is the Discovery Channel telescope the largest instrument currently owned by Lowell Observatory. are doing all kinds of research here with several different universities. Uh, telescopes like this are hard to come by and you usually have to apply for a tremendous long wait for time to get an instrument this big. So it's lucky that Lowell, being a privately um, run observatory, has its own telescope of this size. That's uh, rather unique. Um, so as you saw, earlier we talked a little bit about the specs and stuff like that um, the telescope's actually relatively new um, started in, groundbreaking started in 2002 uh, finished all of its trial uh, runs in 2015 so it's really fairly new telescope and the fact that it has the ability to use multiple instruments right here and flip between th through them with just a touch of a button allows you to analyze different things in the night sky or whatever target you're on very very quickly rather than having to unbolt things so this is the telescope very cool all right so that's our tour telescope behind me if you have any questions email us at focusastronomy at gmail.com if you like it subscribe down below and we'll see you next time